to Reclaim You, a podcast for folks who have experienced trauma, body shame, and disordered eating. Today, we're talking to Emily. Emily is one of the therapists on the Reclaim team. Emily specializes in treating eating disorders, body image concerns, anxiety, and trauma. So welcome, Emily. Thanks. Good to have you here. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. So today, Emily and I are going to be talking about strategies to reclaim your life from diet culture. Um, this whole month on the show, we've been talking about, of course, diet culture, all the ways that it um, disconnects us from ourselves and people we care about, things we care about. So yeah, we're talking a lot about just reclaiming your life from it today. So I'm excited to, to dive in. Cool. So before we start, what I've asked everyone so far is, what does the phrase reclaim you mean to you in your life and your work with clients? So I, I spent a good bit of time thinking about that. And I think the biggest things that came up for me, like in my own life, kind of two aspects. So like reclaiming my relationship with my body was really mm -hmm. big, but I think actually the biggest thing that came to mind was reclaiming my relationship with my thoughts. So I have generalized anxiety. I have a mm -hmm. history of anxiety, like ever since I was a kid, some pretty bad health anxiety mm -hmm. and it controlled me for my mm -hmm. entire life. Like I just would worry about everything. I was anxious about everything all the time. And I just like lived in this constant state of fear, I feel mm -hmm. like. And it wasn't until I think in like my early mid twenties, kind of when I did a lot of this work to like really start reclaiming myself. Like yeah. I can remember I was working with a therapist mm. and I just had this huge breakthrough. These are my thoughts, but like, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're true um. and I don't have to do anything about them. I can just kind of like notice them and figure out how to care for myself through them, but it doesn't mean that I like keep having to go to this worst case scenario situation. Wow. Um, yeah. So I think that that is a huge thing that came up when I thought about reclaiming myself and then obviously yeah. reclaiming my relationship with my body. Um, I feel like it actually happened around the same time, Did it? Um, mm -hmm. but I was working with the same therapist and she kind of introduced me to the concept of body neutrality. And I feel like mm. it was just a light switch. Like, yeah. Oh, I cannot love myself and like how I look like a hundred percent of the time. Like I can still have these thoughts again, like going back to like, I can still have these thoughts, but it doesn't mean that they have to control me. It doesn't mean that I can't still treat my body with respect and love mm. and kindness. Um, so that was, that was what came to mind, um, yeah. for myself. Yeah. And I think that that's something that I always try to encourage with clients as well. And I imagine that spaciousness that that created by kind of reclaiming that, that brain space and how you engage with your thoughts and things like that just expands everything, mm -hmm. expands your yeah. world and, and all of that. I think it's a good thing to talk about because I, this is hard work. Like I know it's hard work because I've done it. And like, I know that it's hard work for clients. And I think that that can be a really big sticking point. Mm -hmm. We are still going to have these thoughts, but like, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that they have to run the show. We can reclaim how we interact with them. Yeah, so, absolutely. That's absolutely. That, that automatic function of the brain just operating and going and going, yeah. I can just kind of be awesome. Yeah. So let's kind of dive into reclaiming your life or how to, how, we, how you support folks or, you know, how folks can reclaim their lives from diet culture. What kind of hope do you feel like there is to start to reclaim your life from diet culture? Hmm. I feel like there's, I feel like there's a lot of hope. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that the world is changing slowly, very slowly, slowly. It was slowly. faster. I know um, if only. Yeah. Right. But I do think that there are some, some positive changes coming about. Like people are actually talking about these things. So I think mm -hmm. that that's one of the biggest things that gives me hope at least is that there's actually awareness. I, I think another thing, I think taking that step to actually work on these things and address these things like with a therapist is indicator that there is hope to, mm -hmm. to move forward and get past some of these things. Yeah. 
Yeah. And to be able to have that space to really volley things back and forth about what things are sticking, what things are like, oh, I, I don't believe in that. That's fine. And to kind of yeah. negotiate how to start to like loosen your grip on some of the, the messages and beliefs yeah. and things like that from diet culture. Yeah. And with somebody yeah. who gets it, because mm -hmm. I think it's hard to have that conversation with somebody else who might also be kind of entrenched in diet culture and not necessarily totally. realize what's going on. So I think having that space to talk about those things, talk about our questions, concerns, fears, sticking points with somebody who gets it yeah. is huge and, yeah. and really important. Yeah, absolutely. I know that, that in my work with clients, I talk about the concept of resiliency. It feels important in like maintaining hope of reclaiming your life from all of the messages and the expectations and, and all of that. What do you feel like resiliency has to do with all of this, reclaiming yourself from the expectations of society and diet culture and wellness culture and all of those things? I think it can be helpful to think about and define, like looking back, like how have I been resilient in my life mm -hmm. and kind of point out those specific times, like this is resiliency this is what it means. This is when I was resilient. Cause a lot of times we don't give ourselves credit in these situations. It's like, yeah. Oh, I went through this thing. Like I never thought I could get through it. Mm -hmm. And we do, but we don't necessarily stop to, to acknowledge that and like process mm -hmm. that and like really celebrate that. So I think that that can always be helpful on with these sticking points, especially to be like, this is when you were resilient. Like you, mm -hmm. you can make it through this. You can do this work. Yeah, it's like acknowledging the hooks into into diet culture that kind of sneak in when we don't expect it. And I think a lot of people, especially the clients that we work with, a lot of people are able to kind of move through those those hooks or reject the hooks um, and stay on the path of just like honoring themselves. And kind of like you were talking about with with the thoughts of like, you can notice it, you can know that, that it's there and not engage with it and then take care of yourself through the process. I think if we look at some of the more formal aspects of resiliency too, so like flexibility, character, mm -hmm. connection, mm -hmm. contribution, like I think that those are all big factors of this work as well. Like we have yeah. to be flexible. We have to consider new ideas. We need to have a good support system to do this work. We need to redefine our values and feel like we're contributing in another way besides just our physical appearance. Sure. Um, Sure. So I think bringing that into it can be really helpful too. I know for a lot of people, I think us included as just people in the world who are constantly consuming media and social media, how social media is such like a hub, a dangerous, yeah. toxic hub for <laughs> diet culture's <laughs> messages. For you, even in your personal life or, you know, what you work with clients on, what are some really important or helpful even strategies to consider when it comes to consuming social media or mm -hmm. being on social media or even like posting on social media because that feels so important in all of this. Yeah. Yeah. I think first and foremost, you got to do a, a cleanse of your social media feed. So if there's people on there who are posting things like what I eat in a day videos uh -huh. or like talking about their weight, like really focusing in on physical appearance. Like some people in videos, like, or even like body checking. Like if there uh -huh. are people that keep coming up that are doing these things, they've got to go. Cause if, yeah. if we, out they keep, go. yeah, like we got to go, it's time to mm -hmm. go. Yeah. Cause if we keep engaging with that, it's going to keep telling our brain, this is normal. This is what I should be. This is what I mm -hmm. should do. We, we have to stop engaging with that and, and taking that in 24 yeah. seven. Um, so I always encourage that as like a first step we need to go through and like any accounts that don't feel good or you, you see their posts and it's like, this makes me feel bad about myself. Let's get yeah. rid of them. And, and I think it can be helpful to replace some of those, those follows. Let's find more maybe body neutral influencers or body positive influencers uh -huh. follow that let's yeah. let's follow people who believe the same things we believe or believe the things that we want to work towards mm -hmm. um I think also it can be really helpful follow people who look like you 
normalize like this is my body my body's okay make sure that it's represented so that it's not I, I keep seeing the same type of body and like this makes me feel really bad about myself yeah that feels so important to be able to you know, be with or witness or observe folks who are in similar bodies as you having fun and experiencing joy and relationships and like getting, I don't know, promotions at work or whatever it is. But, you know, so many of those things are the folks that we work with. And I know historically, probably in our lives, we believed that that wasn't possible for us because our bodies or our disordered eating or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And to see that it can happen for folks in all bodies is is really important. And obviously I think if if people are open to it after we kind of go through our social media feed maybe limiting it so we're not on our phones all day 24/7. Um totally just, doom scrolling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Just set a limit for yourself and then find other things to fill your time. Mhm. Yeah, that, that maybe bring more joy than just scrolling through Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. What do you feel like is the tipping point for people of noticing when social media is becoming toxic? Mm. I think it goes back to that, that gut reaction. If Mm -hmm. you see a post, so you're noticing I'm spending a lot of time on social media and I'm seeing all these posts and they're making me feel really bad. And then maybe they're bringing up old thoughts or they're making me think like, okay, like I need to look like this. I need to do this. Mm -hmm. I think that's a definite red flag that we need to make some changes. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm doom scrolling. So (laughs) I always think about Google, like the WebMD, Googling Uh, your symptoms. Like if you find that you're going down these rabbit holes, what is this? What is this? What does this mean? Should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? Another sign. Maybe we need to take a step back. Take a little break. Yeah. 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 Focus yeah. on something that's going to bring different energy into your, yeah. into your being. Yeah. Like if you're finding that it's just making you anxious, we gotta, we gotta make some changes. Yeah. Not worth it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Totally. So when people start to realize the impact that diet culture has had on them, what can they do to take care of themselves as they kind of grapple with what they have known or what they have done or have been taught really from the culture or even family of origin, that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. and the harm that those things has caused in their lives. So like that intersection of, of how do you take care of yourself when you're acknowledging, oh, I want to be here and here I am. And I've been taught all of these things. It feels like this really hard negotiation. Mm -hmm. So I think it's okay to feel Mm -hmm mad about these things like I think that that is an important part of this work we have to feel mad we we feel sad we feel grief that's all a really normal part of this so I always do encourage people feel your feelings like we have to feel Mm -hmm. our feelings about this Mm -hmm. um while also recognizing this often is the result of like a lifetime of messages Mm -hmm. so if we're feeling mad if we're feeling frustrated that oh my gosh, like I'm learning all of these things and like what all these things did to me. I'm back here and I want to be over here. Mm -hmm. Just recognizing this is an entire lifetime worth of information. And like, it's not going anywhere. Like we still live in diet culture. Yeah. So just really giving ourselves some slack. This is going to be slow work and that's okay. And that doesn't mean that I'm doing anything wrong. Mm. Yeah. So like exiting the shame that diet culture promotes of like not being where you think you should be or where somewhere someone else Mm -hmm. is and showing up for yourself differently. That's so important. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's hard, especially with family members too. I Mm -hmm. see that a lot. Anger at family members. Why did they teach me this? Why did they do this to me or or friends? I think something that has been helpful that I've tried myself and that I've seen clients use reminding ourselves like these people are also victims of diet Mm. culture yeah that can sometimes take some of the edge off and like make that anger a little bit more manageable like yeah Mm. I still wish this didn't happen Mm. but they they also are a victim in this society as well absolutely that gives a little bit more space for for even some compassion which is not 100% necessary that's not what i mean but some space mm-hmm. for oh right we're all swimming in this yeah. 
every day. Yeah. And, you know, people, when they don't know, they don't know. And, you know, we can kind of plant seeds and hopefully, hopefully they'll be receptive and ready to receive them. And oftentimes not, which I think creates yeah. more anger at times, which is totally appropriate as well. And again, feel your feelings. We have to, yeah. um, but almost extending those, like that compassion and like those well wishes mm-hmm. to them. Wow. I, I almost like, I wish they knew what I knew. Uh, yeah. Like it can help with, I think that, that compassion towards others and then towards ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like that even loops in with some resiliency too, mm-hmm. of, you know, being able to, to extend, like, oh my gosh, the entire society, so much compassion to society for really just being steeped in all of this. Some people don't know yeah. better, right? Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully the word continues to spread and, and people really continue to externalize diet culture and divest from the pieces that they're ready to, to divest from and stay engaged with the work. So are there any other strategies that are kind of like your favorite strategies or anything that people can maybe consider or start to use when it comes to distancing themselves or reclaiming themselves in the wake of diet culture? So I think the social media piece is really big. Mm-hmm. So making sure that you're not following any accounts that make you feel bad or promoting very diet culture messaging. Step away from the scale. Yeah. <laughs> Toss that shit. One. Toss yeah, that shit. We yeah. Of, we got to get rid of the scale. Smash um, it. Do whatever you got to do. Yeah, Put it in a closet. Whatever. It. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think finding a community or like like-minded people, whether that's a friend or a therapist or an online group, just someone that shares the like like-minded ideas um mm-hmm. that you're able to kind of talk this through with them yeah um because this is very isolating like diet culture is very isolating so I mm-hmm. think just finding someone who gets it yeah. can be really helpful and really important and then just really getting in tune with things that feel good like mm. joyful movement foods that we love but foods that also make our bodies feel good mm finding clothes that are comfortable and that we love and and can feel good in Mm -hmm. just doing some of these things to kind of take the power back in a way. Like I don't have to eat a certain way. I don't have to move a certain way. I don't have to dress a certain way. I can do this in a way that feels good for me. Yeah. Yeah. Taking your power back. Yeah. Reclaiming your power. Yeah. That feels so important. I also love, and I think I saw this on social media, just like calling out diet culture when you see it, when you start to see you don't unsee it. So when you see it Mm -hmm. in the grocery store or you see it, you know, on Instagram or TikTok or YouTube Mm -hmm. or or whatever, it's not lost on me that we're talking about social media and here we are on social media, but yeah, calling it out. So you can continue to create that dissonance of like where you are and and where you're working towards. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else you feel like you want to add? Nothing I can think of. I think that this was a good little kind of encapsulation of some things we can do to take some power back from from diet culture. I love it. Well, thank you so much. And thank you everyone for watching. And we will be back next week with our with our next episode. So we'll talk to you then. Bye. Bye.